prepare us spiritually, so to speak, to, uh, through a series that I want to start today called this, that um, it's called Stretch. Because in summer, if you stay in summer mode too long, you can get in summer mode spiritually and you can just say, I love this, just fishing every day or whatever it might be every day of your life. But how many of you realize following Jesus means he's going to stretch you every now and then? Stretch, it's the way that we grow. And God is so intent on us growing, he's not willing to us for us to stay in a summer mode spiritually. He's like, I, wanna, I want you to know God, I want you to find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference, and for all of that to happen, we go on a journey called stretch. Tell your neighbor, stretch. Tell him, stretch. All right, so I wanna read, I wanna read a passage of scripture that's gonna be our theme verse, so if you're physically able, will you stand up with me for the reading of God's word today? It's out of Hebrews chapter 10. Stretch the way we grow. Here we go. Verse 24. Let us think of ways. Let us think of ways to motivate. Say motivate. motivate. All right, here it is. Motivating one another. This is the stretch. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Okay. The reason the writer tells us we got to think, we got to get creative and how we can motivate one another is because we can all have a tendency to get into a summer mode spiritually. And every now and then, we need motivation from somebody else to kick us into acts of love and good works. Oh, is anybody in the room today? So let us think of ways to motivate one another and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now, that the day of his return is drawing near. Let me show you in a couple different translations this first verse in verse 24. Let us consider one another in order to stir up. So another way of saying motivate is to stir up love and good works. That's, that, that to me is that's a stretch. Now, in a, in a cowboy town, this a, I don't know if we're a cowboy town, but for the cowboys, we're in a cowboy town. I like this one. Let us consider how we may spur. <laughs> I don't know about you, but spurring, that's all I know about spurs on the back end of some cowboy boots, and they, they just kick, right? So we got to consider how we can spur one another on toward love and good deeds. That, my friends, is the stretch that God is after in your life life and we need each other in order to stretch because we got to consider we got to we got to think about each other and how we can spur one another on so that's why hebrews tells us to consider and to think of ways and to in order to motivate or to stir up or to spur one another on all right tell somebody next to you before you're seated say we're going to grow today go ahead and tell them we're going to grow today yes we are and we all want to grow up right everyone wants to grow up i do remember though as a kid i remember telling my dad i don't know what it was about all us adults that i didn't want to have anything to do with but i remember telling my dad i don't want to grow up and i've i've learned though that god has determined that you and i do grow up and i've also learned that growth doesn't necessarily come with age I've, I've met some 40-year-old kids and some 14-year-old grown-ups. And I won't point them out in the room right now. And so the Lord doesn't want us to stay as a child. He's like, I, I, I designed you to grow up. And in order for you to grow, you've got to allow me to stretch you. You've got to allow the Lord to stretch you. He, he, he's all about the stretch. We are not all about the stretch. Now, I work out every week, and before every workout, I stretch, and I am as unflexible as they come. I mean, I, I can't touch my toes, and I do it four or five times a week try, just trying to get down there. But some of, you are, some of you are ridiculous. You can flat hand on the ground with your knees not bent. I can flat hand too, but I just have to do this. I just have to. So I'm not very flexible in the natural, but I've learned this, that in the spiritual, God doesn't really care about how flexible you are he will stretch you because he is intent 
on you and I growing up. And he's intent on us growing. So today, I want to take a look at a guy in the New Testament that God used to grow up the church and to stretch them in certain ways. And so I want to look at this guy by the name of Barnabas out of Acts chapter 4. His, his real name was Joseph. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas. Why? Because it meant son of encouragement. Now, that's a pretty cool nickname right there. I love that, that you, you were so encouraging everywhere you went that they're just like, Barney's here! You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Here's why, this is the first place you hear about Barnabas. I just wanted to introduce you to him. So everyone was like selling things and they were bringing the money to the kingdom of God for the furtherance of the kingdom. So he sold a field that he owned and he brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. So this is the guy I wanna focus on today and how God used him to stretch the early church. We're gonna go a few chapters later, Acts chapter nine. Look at this. When he, we're speaking of a guy by the name of Saul now, and he became Paul, writer of much of the New Testament. And it says this when, and, and so let me just tell you a little bit about him. Saul, before he became Paul, was a church assassin. No, he wasn't a church. He assassinated Christians. Like, he wasn't like, hey, we have different areas in the church. Would you like to be an assassin? No, it wasn't that. <laughs> he just killed Christians. Didn't like Christians, killed Christians. And so he, but he met Jesus and he got born again. Praise the Lord. Church was pretty excited about that after a while. When Saul or Paul came to Jerusalem, this is after he got born again, he tried to join Life Church, but all the Life Church was afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple. But look what Barnabas did. Did, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord, and that the Lord had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them. So in other words, they're like, they believed Barnabas, they received Saul, he stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He talked and debated with the Hellenistic Jews, but they tried to kill him. When the believers learned of this, they took Saul or Paul down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tar Tarsus. Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened. It says this, living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, the church increased in numbers. All right, here's what I want to sh share with you. I want to share with you out of this story that what, how I see Bar God used Barnabas to stretch the early church. I want to show you how God wants to stretch you. How many of you, are, some of you already know God's really stretching me already and I really don't like it. Irrespective, I want to show you how God, the ways God wants to stretch us. Here we go. Let's talk about it today. The ways that God wants to stretch us. Here we go. Number one, I see it right here. It says, when Saul came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. So the church was living in fear. When it was at the end of the story, it said that they were living in the fear of the Lord. I mean, you know, there's a transition from being afraid to going to the fear of the Lord. Here's one of the areas that God wants to stretch all of us. Ready? He wants to stretch us out of our fears. The early church was afraid of Paul. And um, I get it. Honestly, if I was their pastor, I would have done a lot of background checks on Paul. I would have had a lot of conversations. I probably would have introduced him to all of our security team. I, 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 would have, I would have probably encouraged Paul to watch online, honestly. I'd have been like, why don't you just, why don't you watch online for a while? We'll have our head of security hang out with you every now and then. And so I get it. I get why they were afraid of Paul. But he got born again. He met Jesus. And he was, as you, as you read his writings, he, he felt horrible about his sin. It seemed like he felt that way all the way through his life. Like I... I, he called himself the chief of sinners. So this is how Paul felt about himself. And he didn't need the church to feel that way about him too. And so Barnabas, God used Barnabas to stretch the church out of their fears. And I'm here to tell you, God loves stretching us 
out of our fears. Can I hear an amen from somebody here? There's a guy by the name of Gideon in the Old Testament. And, you know, he's a part of God's people, the Israelites. And they're just overcome by the enemy. And they're, they're small in their own eyes. And he's hiding out in a wine press, threshing some wheat. Because he's afraid of the enemy. Guess what? God comes to Gideon and he's like, hey, mighty man of valor, I'm gonna use you, raise you up as a mighty warrior and you're gonna lead my people to victory over the enemies of God. He's like, no, no thank you. I love serving the Lord right here in my protective wine press, which is really really how a lot of us are. We like, we believe in the Lord and we can have areas of our life that we have great faith and we stretch out, but there's areas in all of our lives somewhere where we like hanging out in a wine press and that's the area that God will go after and say, come on, I wanna call you out like I did Gideon. I wanna get you out of your hiding and I wanna stretch you out of your fear. God's intent on it. He's like, he sees the areas of fear in all of our life. And we think that we can just keep running away from it. But no matter which direction you go, we're like Jonah. It's like, I'll run away from God. We get on a boat, pay the fee to go in the opposite direction of where God's sending us. And the Lord finds him in a storm on a boat. How many of you realize you cannot run away? And you really, God won't let you run away from your fears. He's like, you got at some point following the Lord, he has you face them. He'll have you face them. And he's stretching us out of our fears. There's a guy by the name of Joshua. And he was, a, he was when he became the leader of God's people, he, he followed a guy by the name of Moses. Everyone's heard of Moses pretty much, even if you've never read the Bible. We've heard of Moses. He, he was such an amazing leader and spent time in God's presence in such great ways that his face glowed. How many of you would like to follow that leader? Right? Moses is gone. Your turn. It's like, man, my face doesn't glow. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but, and so this is what the Lord told him. Do not be afraid. He goes, be courageous. Do not be afraid. Be courageous. And he just kept repeating himself to Joshua. Said it over and over and over again. Don't be afraid. What is he doing to Joshua? Same thing he does to us. I'm stretching you out of your fears. Some of you know you're called to be a leader, but you're afraid of being one. Some of you know you're called to be married, but you're afraid of, of being married. Some of you know you're supposed to have kids, but you're afraid of your kids. <laughs> and there's a good reason for that. I get it. <laughs> but God has a way, no matter how far we run the opposite direction, he has a way of finding us there. Because it's like, I don't want you to stay 14. I want you to grow. And the way we grow is in the stretch. And so he will stretch us out of our fears. Many people are missing out on some of the greatest joys of their life. Some of them are missing out on some of the greatest relationships in their life because of fear. They're afraid they won't be liked. They're afraid that they'll lose trust. There are, might, might be multiple reasons. There might be history that has some reasons why you're afraid, but the Lord's like, I'm not gonna give up on you because I, I'm not having you put your, your faith in man. I'm having you put your faith in me no matter what man does. And I'll stretch you out of your fears. I remember as a kid, I was afraid. And not that I haven't been afraid as an adult, I have, but I was afraid of cooked spinach. And my parents were horrible about it. They had cooked spinach all the time. That soggy stuff, right? And it wasn't just cooked. It wasn't just steamed. Then they poured some horrible smelling vinegar on it. That's child abuse. It's like, it's bad enough without the vinegar poured on. And then they just poured vinegar on it. It's like, man, I hated that stuff. I was afraid every time that I could smell the vinegar. I could smell the spinach. It's on the table. And then I grew up and I thought, you know what? I'm going to try this again. And guess what? It's just as bad as I remember it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I actually, I actually grew to like it a little bit. I could say, I'm Papa the Sailor Man, right? Stronger to finish because I eat my spinach, right? All right, anyway, 
Anybody old enough to even remember who Popeye the Sailor Man is? There's a couple of you. Some of us are missing out on the greatest joys of life because we're, we're refusing to allow the Lord to use other people to motivate, stir us up, spur us on, to stretch us out of our fears. Some of you, honestly, you maybe not even recognized it, but some of you are afraid of different personality types. And you're like, you just stay away from those kind of personality types. But here's the, here's the thing that I've learned about being a part of church for decades, that we are a family and and it's probably the people that you are the most afraid of that where you will grow the most. And some of my dearest friends have become people that I, before Jesus, would have never been friends with. And you know what? I would have stayed 14. I, I wouldn't have, I, if I wouldn't have allowed the kingdom of God to stretch me in the area of, of relationships, I would have lost out on so many joys and pleasures of finding out the richness that are in different types of people. And I just would have stayed shallow. But God wants to stretch us out of our fears. Maybe it's in the area of relationships. Maybe it's in the area of starting a business. Maybe it's in the area of, of, of whatever it might be in your life. But I'm here to tell you, God is intent on us growing up and the growth happens in the stretch. Come on, tell somebody next to you again, we're gonna grow today. Tell them, we gonna grow today. God loves stretching us out of our fears. Some of you might be here right now, and it feels like it's the devil. It's like, man, I just, why do I have to keep facing this situation? And, and it might be that the Lord's like, I want you to finally conquer this situation. I want you to face the situation with faith. I want you to, I want you to allow me to stretch you right on out of your fear. Now, that doesn't mean that the situation might ne not necessarily change immediately, but you're changing in it, and that's what God is after. We're talking today about the ways that God wants to stretch us. And the first way that I see God used Barnabas to stretch the early church was he stretched them right out of their fears of who the apostle Paul was. Ways God wants to stretch us. Number two is he wants to, the, he wants to stretch us he wants to stretch our perspectives. He wants to stretch our perspectives. Look at what, because the early church had one perspective of Saul who became Paul. They had one perspective about him. That dude kills people. That was their perspective about Saul. Was it, was it wrong that he had killed people? No. Was it the full perspective? No. Wasn't the complete story. So this is what Barnabas does. Barnabas takes him and brings him to the apostles and he told them, well, here's what he was doing. I'm giving you another perspective. I wanna give you another perspective about who Saul is, how on his journey, he saw the Lord. He saw the Lord and the Lord spoke to him. And in Damascus, he's already been preaching fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Barnabas told them what they didn't know. And God used Barnabas to stretch other people's perspective. And I'm here to tell you, in order for you and I to allow God to stretch our perspectives, we have to allow other people to speak into our life. God used Barnabas to reveal to the disciples a perspective about Paul that they did not know. Like, I thought that I understood women. And then I married one. I had a perspective that honestly needed to be stretched. Now my wife thought she understood men. She had a dad and a brother, but then she married one and her perspective got stretched. You see, when, before I got married, I had a perspective that I thought a good conversation lasted a total of one minute. <laughs> I thought a minute conversation was pretty deep. I thought that was pretty good. And then I, I got a new perspective through being married to my wife that a deep conversation can go longer than 60 seconds without you losing your attention. God uses people in our life to stretch our perspective. And that's why Hebrews says, motivate one another, think of ways 
Think of ways and consider one another and how you can spur one another on and how you can stir one another to love and to good works. God used a Barnabas in my life to change my perspective and to stretch my perspective of what church could be. You see, before I ever knew about a church like this, I grew up Catholic for the first 15 years of my life. And then the next 15 years of my life, I was a part of an Assembly of God church. And in, that, in, in those two experiences of my, of my life, all I knew up to that point was I just, I, I would call it a denominational perspective about church. Which if you, if you grew up in a denominational church, and nothing against denominations. I, I, I love the body of Christ. I love my Methodist brothers and sisters and whatever, Presbyterian, all of them, right? But when I was just in a denomination, that's all I had known. I had this perspective, and you'll probably relate to this if you grew up in a denomination. It was this. I believed that other denomination people, Christians in other denominations were saved, but they, they just didn't really have it completely figured out like I do. Like, I mean, we've got it figured out. Like, my perspective is the perspective everyone else needs. If that's your perspective right now, God wants to stretch your perspective. And so God brought a pastor into my, our lives from Brooklyn Tabernacle in New York City. And he was on staff there and moved to Walla Walla and stretched our perspective. And I didn't understand about this type of church. In fact, I thought you guys were all outside of authority because you were outside of a denomination. And I, I thought we, you all were rebellious. And God used him to stretch my perspective. And literally, that, that perspective change that happened through a Barnabas pastor in my life changed the course of my life. But God used somebody else. He used someone in my life to stretch my perspective. There's all kinds of theolo theological camps within Christianity. We got Arminianism and we got Calvinism. And I was, I was trained biblically in theology in one camp. But then I got to know a brilliant theologian in a different camp. And you know what he did? Stretched my perspective. And rather than just be closed-minded and shallow, how about we allow people into our world that stretch our perspective? Can I hear an amen today? Amen. And so God wants to stretch our perspective about life. He may want to stretch your perspective about church. He may want to, he may want to stretch your perspective about him. And there's one thing I began to understand about, about over time and reading, reading the Bible is that God is bigger than any one mind could ever contain. That's why I need other people in my life that love Jesus and who read their Bible, that just when the Bible is kind of one-dimensional to me or I'm just leaning over to one theological camp and, 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 and then I just, I, I, I let someone else just go, yeah, but what about these scriptures and let them challenge your thinking. It, yeah, but God's just, yes, how, but he's also merciful. And it's hard for one human mind to have a full revelation of the justice of God and the mercy of God simultaneously without passing out. Yeah. <laughs> right? So I need Others perspective and God wants to stretch our perspective about him And so we need one another in order for that perspective To be challenged and in order for that perspective to be stretched an early church father His name was saint augustine He's one of the greatest leaders of his day was uh, born in the fourth century And was very well well written and very well known To be someone who knew god who knew God intimately. If you read some of his writings, you're like, wow, how deep is that? And on his deathbed, he was surrounded by some friends. And on his deathbed, as he breathed his last and he closed his eyes, a peace filled the room where all of a sudden, his eyes popped back open and his face aglow and he declared to those present, I have seen the Lord. All I have written is but straw. Then he closed his eyes and died again. 
St. Augustine, who had a perspective that was brilliant to me, that was amazing. Once he saw the Lord, God gave him one more chance to open his eyes to let us all know he's beyond whatever perspective you have. He's way better than you think he is. We're talking about ways that God wants to stretch us. He wants to stretch us out of our fears. God used Barnabas to do that with the early church. He wants to stretch our perspectives. He used Barnabas to do that when they had one perspective about Saul that needed to have another perspective. I want to talk about another way that God wants to stretch us today and then leave you with just a couple quick application points. Another way that God wants to stretch us out of this. So Saul stayed with them. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is the guy that you were afraid of. This is the guy that you didn't want to have anything to do with. This is the guy that you were like, do not bring him to our church. He's like, but eventually their perspective changed and they let Saul stay with them. Like, Saul, you can move on in. And he moved about freely in Jerusalem. And he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord. And he talked and debated with the Hellenistic Jews. And then when they tried to kill him, the believers learned of it. And they took him down to Caesarea and sent him up. They protected him. So the very ones that they were afraid of, they embraced, moved into our house, and then protected him. Well, how did God use Barnabas to stretch the early church? They stretched. He stretched their love. And these are ways God wants to stretch us. My friends, if you don't know it, know it now. He'll stretch you out of your fears. He will stretch your perspective, and he will stretch our love. God is determined to not leave our hearts small because God is love. God doesn't just love, he is love. And he wants to get that love inside our hearts. And guess what? He will use people that you don't love to stretch your love. Ha <laughs> ha! My wife mentioned earlier, some of you hate your job. And God's using that environment. But you haven't heard all the reasons why I don't like my boss. How does our love stretch if it's just amongst each other? How does our love stretch if it's just among people that are easy to love? That doesn't stretch our love. That's just gooey. That's just, oh, this is so easy. But he stretches our love by putting us in situations that irritate us. Some of you are in love and want to get married. God bless you. You have no idea what's about ready to happen. <laughs> and I know you're in love, and I think it's wonderful. But this is going to happen. I guarantee you, this is going to happen. And then you, you want to have kids. This is going to happen. So God will allow us to get in close proximity with other people so that he can stretch our love. All right, now, I want to show you something else out of this story. So Barnabas believed in Paul before anyone else believed in him. And then he went on missionary journeys with Paul. Years of just amazing ministry trips. And so Paul ends up writing much of the New Testament. And to me, Paul is one of my heroes. I, of all the people I've ever read about or known about in the history of the world, I think the Apostle Paul might be the toughest person I've ever read about. He was tough. And God used him in incredible ways. And he's a hero of mine, really. But would Paul 
have ever become who he was if someone by the name of Barnabas hadn't come into his life. And so Barnabas, check this out. I want to take you to another part of the journey that they had together. Look at this. Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back. They've been ministry together. Let's visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with them. But Paul did not think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. This is Barnabas and Paul, man. This is, this is the duo, right? Barnabas took Mark, sailed for Cyprus. Paul chose Silas and left and commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. So here they are. They're together. Paul's like, listen, Mark deserted us. I don't want to take him. He's not faithful to me in the ministry. I think, he will, I think he'll be a liability. They, I don't know how long they talked about it. But however long it went, it finally ended up in, then fine, I'm not even going on with you in ministry any longer. Parted ways, Barnabas takes Mark. Don't hear about him for a while. Okay, I'll check this out later. Years later, toward the end of Paul's ministry, look what he says about Mark. Remember, Mark's hanging out with Barnabas. Do your best to come to me quickly for Demas because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. By the way, you did not want to know the apostle Paul and do something wrong or it was written in scripture for eternity. <laughs> right? Look at this. He goes on. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Look at what he said about Mark. Get Mark. Bring him with you because he's helpful to me in my ministry. Wow. What, whatever Barnabas did over time with Mark changed Paul's perspective about Mark and most likely changed Mark's perspective about himself. And where once in Paul's mind, Mark was disqualified because he hung out with Barnabas for a while, he became qualified again. If we will allow Jesus to stretch our love like, Jesus, like Barnabas allowed Jesus to stretch his love, just maybe someone who's disqualified by others might become qualified again. Because of scriptures like this, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of of sins. I'm here to tell you today, the growth is always in the stretch. The growth is always in the stretch. God wants to stretch us out of our fears. He wants to stretch our perspectives and he wants to stretch our love. So I'm here to asking you a question. Who are you allowing to stretch you? Who are you allowing to stretch you? Now listen, I know so many of us immediately are like, Lord, you can stretch me. But that's not what Hebrews says. <laughs> Hebrews says, let us consider one another to figure out ways to motivate, stir up, and to spur one another. God uses the body to stretch us in the ways he wants to stretch us. If you are in the camp, just me and Jesus, and he's going to stretch me, you are not allowing God to stretch you. Ooh, it got quiet on that one. Nobody liked it. <laughs> Who am I allowing to stretch me? All right. I want to I wanna give you two thoughts. How do I grow in the stretch? And I learned this from Barnabas's life. How do I grow in the stretch? Number one, believe the best out of others. Did you, I didn't say believe the best of others. I said believe the best out of others. 
Barnabas, believed the best out of the Apostle Paul. And he became one of the greatest Christian men in the history of the planet. But Barnabas believed in him before the entire church ever did. But I believe he believed the best out of him. And when that guy, Paul, didn't believe in Mark anymore, Barnabas still did. Because I still believe in Mark. God will still use you. Come on, let's go, let's go find out. Let's go on a journey together. And he believed the best out of Mark in such a way that the apostle Paul said, get Mark and bring him with you. He's helpful for me in the ministry. I believe that when we believe the best out of others, we bring the best out of others. Oh, I wanna be and live a life like Barnabas, who believed the best out of others, even when others didn't believe in them. And last but not least, to grow in the stretch, I'm gonna believe the best out of people. And this next one might be the hardest. Stay in the tension of community. Stay in the tension of community. I didn't say stay in community because I want you to understand what community actually is. Genuine biblical community or community that stretches you has tension. Great marriages stayed through the tension. Great relationships stay through the tension. Deep fellowship and friendships happen through staying through the tension. And I read that story about Barnabas because there was deep tension. And I think Mark could have thought, you know what, Paul, I ain't going back with you. We had tension. And you didn't want me then, and I don't want you now. But he would have missed out on the blessing of the community that God had for him. Community, God has designed community to have tension. That's why the Bible says things like this, let iron sharpen iron. There's a sense of friction, but that strengthens us and we grow in the tension of community. If I always just bounce every time there's some tension, and I'm like, oh, well, adios, next friendship, next marriage, next job, next church, and I just keep bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. God's faithful, and you'll find that the next, the, the, the people may be different, the circumstance may be different, but you're gonna discover, man, this feels familiar. Because God's faithful for you to grow. And what you didn't face 15 years ago, he's like, can I just get you to stay in the tension? How do we ever learn how to forgive if we don't have tension? God's faithful to grow us up. And I just wanted you to see today the ways that he will stretch us. And no matter how much whining, he's like, I'm going to stretch you. Now, let me rephrase that. He wants to stretch you, but you can isolate. You have that choice. You have the choice just to live an isolated life, feel safe, but that is a decision to stay at that age.
So let's just stretch ourselves right into fall life groups. How's that for a plug? Yeah, but I did one in the spring and I'm here to tell you, they were all weird. Find another one. They'll probably be weird too, but it's all good. Stay in the tension. Stay in the tension. I want to pray for you today. You bow your heads, close your eyes. Father, I thank you that you're faithful to grow us up. You're faithful to stretch us. I pray for those in the room right now that you're working on saying, I want to stretch you out of your fears. And I pray that that would happen. I pray you'd stretch perspectives. Lord, I pray you'd stretch our love. We invite you to help us to grow as a people. Help us to believe the best out of others and help us stay in the tension of community. And I pray that the joy and the pleasure of heaven will rest on your people even in the seasons of stretching. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're in this room, and you are not sure if you have a relationship with this Jesus of which we speak of today, or you're pretty sure that you do not, this is your opportunity to get your right, life right with him. And he is one prayer away. If you will just admit with me as anyone else in this room that has a relationship with God has, I'm a sinner and I need you, Jesus, to be my savior. I wanna say a prayer right now to include you in. And if that's you and you'd say, Bob, I'm not sure I'm right with him. If you're online or in this room, this is your chance. Do not miss this opportunity to pray this prayer with me to get your life right with Jesus. He loves you so very, very much. And he's ready to forgive you of every sin you've ever committed or ever will. If that's you and you'd say, Bob, I'm gonna pray that prayer with you. Then between me, you and Jesus, I just wanna recognize, I wanna catch eyes with you. Will you look up at me and just wave so I can catch eyes with you and say, you're gonna pray, all right, I see you. Who else is here? I don't wanna miss you today. Wonderful, I see you. You want to just pray this prayer with me today. Thank you, Lord. Church, we're going to pray all this together. Will you stand up with me together as we pray this prayer? Everyone repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, here I come in need of forgiveness. Come into my heart. I want to be born again. Fill me today with your Holy Spirit so I can live for you all the days of my life. I pray this now in Jesus' name. And everybody shouted amen. amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap today.